So I think that after a good while, you're all used to hearing me talk about some interesting looking LEGO creations. So it should come as no surprise that I would be the one to present you with some of LEGO's very own freakish works of art. And no, none of them are Mesonac, I'm sorry to disappoint, but he is just a freak of nature. This is Venom speaking, and I'm here to bring you the top 10 Bionicle combo models. And to kick off the list, we start with number 10, the Toa Kaida. A pair of combo models that are each composed of three different Toa. There's Akamai, or Akamai, I don't know how to pronounce that, comprised of Tahu, Pohatu, and Onua, and the other one being Wairuha. Jeez, you don't make this job easy, Lego. Comprised of Liwa, Kopaka, and Gali. These combo models basically introduce the function of combining different sets together to create a bigger creation. I mean, sure, this function was available in the Turaga and the Matorn, but it wasn't as cool. I mean, these were the sets that were selling. The Toa. So it was a pretty cool idea that you could pick up three of the Toa and end up combining them all into this bigger hero thing. But as inspiring as the Toa Kaida are, they aren't exactly the best looking. They're a bit weird and fairly gappy in their own right, but they're really on this list mostly for their importance to the rest of the line. They set precedents, yo. Precedents that were stomped on by other models, such as the next one. At number 9, we have the Pit War Tortoise, which is comprised of three Baraki sets, Mantax, Elec, and Karpar. Or if you're like me and you like to pronounce it a different way, Karapper. Now this is a really creepy looking thing, but unlike many combo models, it does the job of maintaining a streamlined sort of design. There aren't really any gaps or any parts that just kind of stick out awkwardly, except for maybe the squid launchers, which shouldn't be in anything ever. But we don't end up getting a jumble of parts that's just thrown together and, and attached with some stupid name. No, we actually get a new creature with its own unique, cohesive design. The colors don't really mix too badly either. We have green, yellow, and blacks from each set all in the right places. But of course, this is also overshadowed by other combo models that do its job way better than it ever could dream of. Sorry, Pit War Tortoise. At number eight, we have Toa Jovan, comprised of three Toa Inaika, Nuparu, Hali, and Huki. And unlike the Toa Kaida, this combo model doesn't really try to accomplish combining the three Toa together. Rather, it focuses completely on making a brand new character out of these three sets. Kinda like the Pit War Tortoise, except this looks a bit cooler. Now, Jovan here has got a pretty slick design, but in the end, he ends up kinda looking like Nuparu with a couple of extra attachments. Like he just kinda borrowed a couple of parts from his Toa brethren, or brother and sister, I guess, and then s decided to slap them all together, or just slap them on random parts of his body. He has freaking Fuki's feet for shoulders. Can you imagine just going up to your brother, cutting off his foot, and attaching it to your shoulder like armor? That's disgusting. But regardless, it's nice to see that we got another Toa character come out of a combo model. But I think we can find some more impressive builds. Like in the case of number 7, Makuta Nui. Or as I'd like to call it, the devil. I mean, you thought Makuta by himself looked bad to the bone? No. You combine him with Takua and Puku and Jaller and Gukko and you get just the embodiment of evil. I mean, just look at those small red eyes that just stare into your soul. And these sharp teeth and these sharp claws and these large clown shoes. I mean, that is sure to terrify people. It's unfortunate that this combo model has like no story relevance at all, because this could make for a potentially intimidating villain in Bionicle. It's got this great menacing design and okay color scheme that kind of reminds me of an infected mask. Now, I personally think that this is a neat combo model, but I know that there are some features on it that are a bit polarizing. And this is definitely far from the best one we have. Plus, in terms of its design, it kind of just resembles a mutated Makuta. Like, there are still elements of his design present here. Kind of like with the Jovan, except not as obvious. So with that said, let's keep moving on here, huh? So at number six, we have the Shadowed One, which can be built from Rudaka and Kitongu. So this is another unique model that is comprised of the Titan sets. 
Except this is actually a character with story relevance. And he also has a pretty decent color scheme. I mean, black, yellow, and silver? That's really well done. But the Shadowed One's overall appearance is a bit of an anomaly. He's sort of this humanoid figure with a third leg or tail? What is that? And then he has this giraffe neck leading up to this head that doesn't look too bad. I also gotta point out that that staff is kinda cool. It's a bit of a strange build, but I appreciate that it really deviates from the sets that it's comprised of. And then creates this whole new character with a whole new design. And it's not really a bad design either, just a little weird. But you know it's an even cooler design? Number 5. The Zyglak. Comprised of three Baraki again, Prydak, Takadox, and Kalma. I actually have this combo model built, and I gotta say, I really like it. It has this monstrous lizard thing going on for it, and it sports American colors, which is kind of thrown off by the orange tail, but I appreciate what it's there for. What's really neat about this build in particular is that it utilizes parts from the sets in a very unique way, like using this Prydak foot to make up the snout and the top part of the head for this creature, and then the Baraki mandibles make up the feet. Actually, now that I look at it again, the whole head design is really creative. And overall, it comes out looking quite impressive. But you know it's even more impressive? Number 4. Ultimate Doom. Or is it Ultimate Duma? Ultimate Doomay? Well, anyway, this one is comprised of three Titan sets yet again. Nidiki, Kreka, and Turagadoom and Navak. And man, does this thing... this thing's huge. And also quite menacing, which is quite fitting since it's meant to be another form of the Makuta. Pterodax, everybody's favorite. What's really cool about this build is that it utilizes so much from each set. I mean, obviously there's quite a bit left over, but you can see that there's quite a bit thrown into the torso and these abnormally long thighs, and that head, and those wings. I'd say this and the Makuta Nui could compete for looking like the embodiment of evil. What was also cool about this combo model is that if you bought that special edition set that came with all three of these sets, then it included this mask that you could actually place on top of this creepy, toothy, monstrous head. And then boom, you have a creepy, toothy Krakan. But I gotta say, there's some odd parts to it, of course. Like I said, the long thighs. The spread of different colors is a little weird. Ultimate Doom has a big and mean presence, but you know it has a bigger and meaner presence? Number 3, Botar. Comprised of two titans, Axon and Brutaka. Now Botar looks like a kind of a redo of Ultimate Doom. Like it has some of the same ideas, make this big guy with the monstrous looking face. Except unlike Ultimate Doom, Botar actually has a decent color scheme, some pretty decent proportions, and he actually has weapons. He doesn't have wings, but the wings on Ultimate Doom didn't really work anyway because they could not hold up that well. So objectively, this is better. Now what's really cool about Botar is that he has opposable thumbs on both hands. Okay, no, but the best part about Botar is that he has a great looking silhouette. So he's a little bit weird looking and he has these gaps in his thighs, but this combo model really utilizes the parts from each set to make a nice solidified build. And there's even reasonable features of support in this build too, like these pistons that are located in the abdomen and towards the bottom of the legs. I mean, these are really smart additions to the build because for something this big, it's gonna need that. Ultimate Doom didn't really have that, so Botar is kinda setting bars for creating some sort of ginormous creation. But of course, some things about his design could look a bit better, which is why at number two, we have the Naya Zesk, comprised of Toa Ignaika, Pohatu Fantoka, and Vampra. Now I know it kind of seemed like I was getting somewhere with all those big freaking monsters of combo models, 
but size isn't everything. And I'd say Naya's esque pretty much proves that with its creative design and its considerably fluid color scheme. I mean, come on, this thing just looks great. And this bug-like appearance makes it a very interesting build. And I'm really surprised that this design didn't have its own set, because it's really neat looking and it's an overall great looking combo model that doesn't seem to have many clunky or messy looking features like the many other combo models offered by Bionicle. But if you want a really well done and a really impressive looking combo model, the number one is going to be for you, and that would be the Cardas Dragon, comprised of three titans, Brutaka, Axon, and Bison and Fenrak. This is the largest Bionicle model to date, and I mean, can't you tell? This thing's tall, bulky, and menacing. It could probably chew up all the other models on this list and still have room for the other combo models that weren't on this list. I mean, this thing is crazy. It's got this big, intuitive build that utilizes a good chunk of the parts out of each set. I mean, we still get Vazon, and that's kind of a lazy addition to the whole thing. But at least you get another character to play with. But even if it were just the dragon alone, I'd still feel really satisfied building it because this thing is awesome. And the colors from each set don't really look too bad mixed here together. I mean, it's kind of like Botar in that sort of sense. But this... This thing offers so much just from its intricate build and its amazing payoff. And did I mention that this thing also has a bit of story relevance too? Overall, the Cardas Dragon is an awesome combo model. And it definitely deserves to be number one on our top ten list of combo models. But hey, that's just our opinion. What are yours? Post your own top 10 list in the comments below, or bring the discussion over to the message boards at board.tvpodcast.com. I'm Venom, and I thank you all for watching.